I turn the light on and I see that the bone that should be like this is like that. And I go, that is not a spray. I'm sure of it. And she goes, what should I do? I said, you should do nothing. I will call 911. I have to confess, I was very, very excited to call 911. Have you ever been excited to call where you're like, finally, a good one? You know, like, this is why we play the game. I call. The operator goes 911, and I'm so amped up. I go, get fucking ready. He's like, okay. He goes, you need police or paramedic? I go, paramedic, but send them all. He was like, what happened? And I was like, ooh. And I realize that while what I'm about to say is true, it sounds suspicious. <laughs> but I got to say it. So I'm like, my wife fell down the stairs. <laughs> And the operator goes, uh-huh. <laughs> he goes, how'd that happen? And I was like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> he goes, was she alone? I'm like, do I need to talk to a lawyer? <laughs> Four paramedics show up. I open the door, and they go, what happened? I go, you know the deal. <laughs> My wife fell down the stairs. If you're still not on board with this, how about an old, reliable one? You know, how about Tourette syndrome? Yeah. Maybe you've heard of that. If you haven't, let me tell you. When I was in fifth grade, my parents sent me to a new school on a Wednesday. I'll never forget. It was a Catholic school, and on Wednesdays, they had mass. So picture you're a new student at a new school. You don't know anybody, and the first thing you're doing is you're going to church. So I walk in, and the priest starts the service. He goes, name of the Father and the Son. And the kid in the row in front of me goes, fuck your cunt. Nobody did anything, no one batted an eye. He just goes, Holy Spirit, starts reading from the Bible. <laughs> this kid goes, lick my balls. <laughs> like, fuck you. I am laughing so goddamn hard. But I know I'm not supposed to laugh. It sounds like I'm having a stroke. I'm 10, I'm like, <laughs> I have tears running down my face. And finally, I'm able to get out. Heck, up, nobody is laughing. And the kid next to me goes, he's got Tourette's. I go, what is the point? Why argue with this demon woman, you know? <laughs> Just let Lucifer's sister have her way. <laughs> You're not going to change your mind. So for the first time in my life, I took a deep breath, and I just went, yeah, I could see why he would do that. <laughs> Hope he stops killing us. Ha 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 ha. And she knew. She goes, What? <laughs> I go, You make a good point. And she goes, Why are you doing this? <laughs> why are you doing, meaning, why aren't you arguing with me? I go, Mom, I don't know. Who cares? You're right. I'm wrong. So what? And she goes, Tommy, do you know what? I go, What? She goes, I always knew you were a little bitch, Tommy. <laughs> And I go, what? And she goes, ciao, puto. And she hung up the phone. By the way, is there any more satisfying feeling than letting an elevator door close on somebody? I did it. I did it at the hotel earlier. I got such a warm rush through my body. It felt like the inside of my body hugged the outside of my body, you know? And I was trying to figure out, why does this feel so good? I, I think it's a taste of power. Like most of us, we have no power in our everyday lives. But if you're alone in an elevator, you are lord of the elevator shaft. I have a wife, and she will correct me, but in a code. Like, you wouldn't know that she's correcting me, but if I misspeak like that, my wife will turn to me and she'll go, uh, are you retarded? And I'll be like, oh, yeah. Thank you. We're a team.
People ask me all the time, Tom, what is the key to your marriage? Simple, I say, intimidation and fear. <laughs> My wife is Kim Jong-il, and I am the people of North Korea. Every day, there are a series of interrogations leading to a looming execution, okay? <laughs> I have a very question-oriented household. Like, my house is basically, she's like, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Why don't you come over here? Why don't you go over there? Why don't you put that up? Why don't you take that down? Why is that open? Why don't you close that? Why are you eating that? Why do you put it away? Why don't you drag it over here? Why don't you cut it up? Why don't you take it outside? Why don't you bring it back in? Why are you eating that? Why are you texting? Who are you texting? Who the f is Amanda? Or the DMV. I went to renew my license. And when you go, you sign and you pay. Very casually, the lady goes, can you read line three? And I was still arrogant about it. I was like, check this shit out. <laughs> A-X-G-L-7. And she goes, seven? <laughs> I go, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that symbol before in my entire life. Because I think you should stop telling that story. And I go, fuck you. <laughs> Get out of here, man. He goes, fuck you. And I go, why don't you change my diaper? He goes, what? I said, you heard me, bitch. It was at that moment I realized we had this amazing insult at our fingertips that we're just not utilizing enough. Why isn't change my diaper part of the lexicon? It should be the ultimate insult. It should be like, fuck you, why don't you fuck your mother, why don't you change my diaper, game over. I'm serious. Rappers should wear them in videos and be like, change my diaper, bitch. <laughs> the president of another country should tell ours, change my diaper, orange man. <laughs> and listen, if you're a parent, you know exactly why that insult is so appealing. Well, listen to me. If you have never been surprise mega-dosed, it is Horrific. It is a harrowing, panic-induced terror ride. And so a few weeks ago, I did it to my mother. Uh, I, did. I was visiting her. She's alone. She knows I ate them at night. I've told her for a while they help me sleep, which they do. And she calls them gummies. So she comes up to me and she's like, are you going to have a gummy tonight? And I go, yes. She goes, may I have one? And I was like, <laughs> I wake up, I don't even know where the fuck I am. It's morning. I walk into the kitchen at the same time as her. I go, hey, mom. And she doesn't say anything. I'm like, oh, shit. She just walks over to the coffee maker and she goes, I know you tried to kill me last night. <laughs> It was very clever. <laughs> but I am still here, Tommy. <laughs> I go, I didn't try to kill you. And she goes, oh, yes, June did. <laughs> so I leave for the day. I come back later. I go, look, I owe you an apology. I should not have let you eat that much. I'm sorry. And she goes, it's okay. I forgive you. I'm like, really? Thank you. That makes me feel better. She goes, I just want to tell you one thing. And I go, what? She goes, I want another gummy tonight. And I go, what? <laughs> she eats them every day now. She's doing coke. She grew her bush out. She's fucking the neighbors. She's living her best life. If you ever meet her, give her drugs. Thank you guys very much for coming out. Have a great night. I'm a cartoon character and I've come to life. Here's all I'm saying. I support building a wall if it's around the state of Louisiana because those people are out of their fucking minds. <laughs> you fucking swamp people, we don't need you. <laughs> what are we gonna miss out on? Where well, you gonna get your shrimp? Oh, what a contribution. No more gator, no more shrimp. <laughs> Fucking inbreds. So, cracker ass inbreds, we don't need you. Yeah, tell them. Fucking tell them. They'll see this shit. Fuck you, cracker.
my six-year-old, he goes, what would you do if a bad guy took your stuff? <laughs> I would ask him to give it back. I don't know. <laughs> he goes, I would get a sword. <laughs> I would cut him into pieces. <laughs> and I put the pieces in the mailbox. I'm like, what are you doing with the mailbox, Dahmer? He goes, you know, Grandpa liked a full bush. I go, hey. <laughs> Did he call you? How do you know that? <laughs> My kids call me Tom. <laughs> so unnerving. Every day, the older one's like, how you doing, Tom? <laughs> I go, hey, I'm not your fucking stepdad, all right? <laughs> I wish I was. It'd be a lot easier, but I'm not. I go, call me dad. He goes, I like Tom. I'm like, all right. What is up with your voice, dude? You smoke cigarettes? Why do you talk like that? The kid sounds like he fixes Harleys all day, but she goes, why am I hungry? I said, because it's working. And she goes, the dog was here. The dog is gone. And I go, oh my God. I start to laugh so destructively hard. <laughs> it, it is not ha, ha, ha. It is a deep, primal... I'm watching my 77-year-old mother get high. I'm not laughing. My nervous system is shutting down, all right? <laughs> I mean, I'm watching her look at sounds. You know, she's like... It hurts. It hurts how hard my a soft... I'm like... <laughs> As I'm laughing, I look at her, and at one moment, her face contorts. Her face. And she looks at me, and she goes, tomorrow, your laughter will be tears on my corpse. And I'm like... I am a cartoon character, and I've come to laugh. Here's all I'm saying. I support building a wall if it's around the state of Louisiana, because those people are out of their fucking minds. <laughs> you fucking swamp people, we don't need you. <laughs> what are we gonna miss out on? Well, you gonna get your shrimp? Oh. <laughs> what a contribution. No more gator, no more shrimp. <laughs> fucking inbreds. So, cracker ass inbreds, we don't need you. Yeah, tell them, fucking tell them. They'll see this shit. Fuck you, cracker. Hey! Are you the comedian? <laughs> I go, yeah. He goes, where do you think the term motherfucker comes from? Hello, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> I go, I don't know. He goes, you think it's from people doing that? <laughs> I'm like, fucking their moms? <laughs> and he goes, yeah. <laughs> I go, I don't know. He goes, how many people do you think do that? <laughs> I go, more than you want it to be. <laughs> and he's like, meow. <laughs> then, and I am not making this up, I could not make this up, he says to me, how about daughter fuckers? <laughs> uh, the truth is this, I'm just, uh, I'm happy to be doing stand-up again and actually standing because not long ago, I had a sports-related injury. I don't know if you know this or not. Um, well, if you don't know, I will try to say this with a straight face. Uh, I, Tom, the guy you see standing up here, I was severely injured whilst participating in a slam dunk contest. Um, on a slightly lowered rim. Now, it was wild. If you don't know, I tore my patellar tendon right there, which, you know, whatever. <laughs> happened to Clay Thompson, happened to me. It happens to us, but... I'm not Clay Thompson, so I also broke this arm. And 
It's all captured on video that I find very not funny, but a lot of people enjoy it. I have to tell people all the time, like, yeah, I didn't laugh a lot that night. And they're like, really? Yeah. There is one exchange that I do like to share, and it is this. Immediately after I was hurt, I was in the emergency room, and I was badly hurt. I had a shattered arm, a leg that didn't function, and they were prepping me for the operating room. And at that time, a trauma surgeon came into that room, and he looked at my x-rays, and he goes, car accident? Listen, if you're a guy and you're thinking about doing it, do it. It's a routine procedure. You will be nervous the morning of. It's your balls. When you lay on a table, it's very cold. It's like 400 below zero, and they pull up your dress very dramatically. They're like, what's going on down here? And your dick just stares at you like, how could you, you know? But it's over in 15 minutes, which I think is remarkable. And then you go back a week later for the follow-up, and the follow-up is just a urologist checking you out. And he goes, all right, drop your shorts, you know? And he's like, all right, hmm, hmm. He goes, yeah, it tastes the same, you know? <laughs> and he says, uh, he goes, I'm going to give you your homework. Those are his words. I'm going to give you your homework. I go, what's my homework? He goes, go home, ejaculate 20 times, bring in your 21st sample in this cup, and we'll test it and let you know if you're clear. And I was like, that ain't shit, you know? <laughs> I'll do my homework all the time, baby, so... <laughs> He goes to leave, but he stops at the door. And he goes, oh, I almost forgot to tell you. Take your time. And I said, I was gonna. And then he says, sometimes I forget to tell people, which tells me that some people have returned rather quick with their assignment. So I immediately asked him, I go, hey, what's the fastest anyone's done 20 ejaculation? <laughs> he goes, 48 hours. And I was like, well, that motherfucker can keep that record. I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> That's the champ champ right there. <laughs> I went home and took another week off. I was black and blue. I was sore. I was like, all right, you know, but after the week, I was like, it's time to get going. I started slowly, you know. I was like, wake up. It didn't feel the same. It was strange, different, you know. I could feel the system turning on. You know what it reminded me of? You know when you run the heat for the first time in the winter and you're like, this smells weird, man. Like, I could feel it building up and I could not get this one intrusive thought out of my head, which was, it's just gonna be blood that comes out. I didn't want it to be. I just kept thinking it. So now I'm jerking off all scared. I was like, it's gonna be blood. But I pushed through, I kept going. And when it finally did go, it wasn't blood. And in relief, I laughed. You can't say midget? God damn it. I never thought we'd lose that one. Can't say it. People get very upset. I never said it to be cruel. And let's be honest, it was perfectly acceptable for years. The best part about the word midget before it became offensive is that it's specific. You know exactly what someone's talking about when they say it. That's what was great about it. You could be like, oh, I was at the zoo today and I saw a midget. And you'd be like, oh, did they feed him to the lions? Like, what happened next, you know? But now, I can't say that. Now I gotta be like, I saw a little person. And you're like, was it a child or? I'm like, no, under 4'11 with the hands. Oh, okay. Now you know what I'm saying. So you might be sitting in your seat now going like, well, Tom, what can we still say? What can we say? I'll tell you what you can say. White racial slurs. All of them. Let her rip. Cracker, Mick, Kraut, Polak, Frog, Guinea, Wop, Honky. Have fun. Say them all you want. And if you're not white and you're going, wait, are you saying that I can say those? That's exactly what I'm saying. Nobody cares. Call up your Italian friend tomorrow and be like, hey, you fucking guinea, and he'll go, <laughs> I don't care, I don't care, I don't give a shit. It's not a historically disenfranchised group. The best slur of all for me, I think, is honky. I'll tell you why. The word honky is hilarious in and of itself, but for some reason, truly racist white people have latched onto that word. It's like this great indicator to know if someone's racist. If they act like that word is offensive, 
run, okay? You don't believe me, watch the news. Next time there's some, like, racial fight in the news, they'll find some hillbilly. Like, what happened? He'll be like, well, he called me a honky. And they're like, and did you pass out from laughing hysterically, or what happened next? <laughs> He's like, no, I stabbed him. And you're like, oh, shit. That's fucking crazy. So I was doing shows up in Portland, Oregon, and did a few shows, big show like this. Group came up to me afterwards, and they go, we noticed you have Nikes on. Do you like them? And I go, yes. And they go, do you want to come to Nike headquarters tomorrow? And I said, not really, no. <laughs> I like your shoes. I don't want to see your office, man. And he goes, well, you can shop at the employee store. So I go, what's that? He said, it's a warehouse. It has every product imaginable, and you would get 50% off. And I go, how about I rent a U-Haul, and I empty your fucking store tomorrow? <laughs> He goes, have at it. And I said, there's no better feeling than killing the enemy. It was fucking awesome. I loved it. Those birds are extinct now. I did that shit. I don't give a fuck. Ah, I'm crazy. So, ah, oh, man. Don't you hate everyone? Um, I mean, Obviously, I'm not talking about you guys, but uh, <laughs> no, I've, been, I've been on this tour for a long time, too long, and, you know, I meet people sometimes after shows, you know, I meet people, and it's always a roll of the dice. He opens the console, he takes out a joint, he lights it, he passes it back. I hit it out of respect, right, because he's old. Then I give it back to him, and the next thing he says is, uh, yeah, I can't drive unless I'm fucked up. <laughs> I'm like, do you hear what you just said? And he goes, yeah, I'm ripped right now. And I'm like, well, hands on 10 and 2, motherfucker. Like, keep it together. And he goes, is that all you do? Smoke weed? I can handle a guy that smokes weed. He goes, well, I love it all. And I'm like, what's all? That's a broad statement. He goes, I love coke. I love heroin. But there's nothing like smoking rocks. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, no, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Mind you, this is while he's driving. So it's actually like, I love smoking rocks, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dude, turn around. So I go, can I ask you something? He goes, yeah, what's up? I go, what's it like to smoke rocks? I've never done that before. And he goes, uh, ooh. I was like, is that the whole sentence? Is that it? He goes, that shit is the best. And what I like to do personally is I like to sit in my apartment and fire them up. And then I look out the peephole <laughs> and I watch people walk around and I just freak the fuck out about what's gonna happen next. And then he gave me a head nod like, doesn't that sound awesome? I was like, dude, that sounds terrible. That's called a panic attack. And that's a horrible sales pitch for crack. Now I'm definitely not gonna try it. You can't say midget? God damn it. I never thought we'd lose that one. Can't say it. People get very upset. I never said it to be cruel, and let's be honest, it was perfectly acceptable for years. The best part about the word midget before it became offensive is that it's specific. You know exactly what someone's talking about when they say it. That's what was great about it. You could be like, oh, I was at the zoo today, and I saw a midget. And you'd be like, oh, did they feed him to the lions? Like, what happened next, you know? But now, I can't say that. Now I gotta be like, I saw a little person. And you're like, was it a child, or? I'm like, no, under 4'11 with the hands? Oh, okay. <laughs> now you know what I'm saying. So, you might be sitting in your seat now going like, well, Tom, what can we still say? What can we say? I'll tell you what you can say. White racial slurs. All of them. Let her rip. Cracker. I took diarrhea this morning. <laughs> and I just found out that not everybody does. Here's how I found out. My wife and I moved to a new living room couch. It's closer to that bathroom than it was in the old place. So the second day we're there, I go in there, I do my thing. When I walk out, my wife is no longer sitting on the couch. She's now standing, holding car keys. And she goes, do you need to go to the hospital? <laughs> I go, for what? She goes, for what just happened in there? And I go, what just happened in there? 
She goes, is that normal for you? I was like, I don't even remember what happened, so I guess so. She goes, Jesus, how often do you shit like that? And I was like, every day. She goes, oh my God, is there blood in there? There could be, I don't know. I just go, Wah! and I hit flush. And I get why you laugh at my physical flaws. Physical flaws are funny. They just are. Disabilities are not. But some are. Most aren't. We know those ones, you know? Like if there's a 10K or a quilt, it's pretty bad. But <laughs> the rest are up for debate. <laughs> and if you're sitting here and you're like, well, well, well when is it ever f -f 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 funny? <laughs> well, luckily for you, I have three examples. First, <laughs> foreign accent syndrome. Some of you know about it, some of you don't. It's real. You can look it up on your way out of here. Some people experience head trauma. Not funny. But they wake up speaking their native language with a foreign accent. Very funny. <laughs> I defy you to watch interviews with these people and not piss yourself. I absolutely ruin hotel rooms. Like, if you stay in a hotel room after I stay there, shit is gonna itch on you, okay? Just being honest. <laughs> Come on, hotels are great. Everybody loves hotels, especially when you check in with your significant other. Why? Because you know, in a hotel, you're gonna have sex, but you're gonna have an elevated form of sex. You're gonna have hotel room sex, which is let's have sex, but let's also disrespect this room. Yeah, I do that too, except I'm alone. <laughs> Like, I always wipe my balls on the curtains because I know they don't change those. <laughs> Think about that the next time you want some sunlight. Or don't, just know that it's on your hand, you know what I mean? <laughs> Here's what I've learned watching that show, okay? Lawyer up. You can't handle that shit. Everybody's like, I'm gonna talk to the cops and straighten this whole thing out. You're gonna do 25 to life. Have fun with that, man. Nobody asked for a lawyer. I've seen 300 people get interrogated on this show. Two of them were like, I talked to a lawyer? And both times the detectives were like, fuck! <laughs> and then at the end of those episodes that said on the screen, all charges against Tayshawn were dropped. Or Jim, pick a fucking name. Let's be honest, there's no Jims on the show. I've seen every episode. And none start with, hey, Bryce, can we talk to you for a second, man? Where were you last Friday? I was over at Tanner's house. Then Skylar had a party, so we went over there. And then we picked up Connor and we had pancakes. Sorry, bro. <laughs> the detective, bro, bro. The manager goes, some people suck. And he walked away. That is the best customer service line I've ever heard in my life. Hands down. You can't even get mad. If you're in a restaurant, you've been waiting on your food, you're like, hey, where the fuck is my food? I've been here half an hour. And the manager's like, some people suck. You'd be like, oh yeah, some people suck. I didn't think about it. Sorry about that. The next day, I go back to the movies. I should point out, I saw a different movie. It was also a different baby. It's not the same family standing out front. And then they see me and they're like, oh, there he is. All right, let's go inside. This time, I am way further into the movie. I'm emotionally invested in this movie. I like the movie. And then, out of nowhere, I hear <laughs> This time, I swear to you, I audibly go, nah-uh. And now, other people get involved. You know when you can hear somebody's age in their voice? Like, I can't see shit. It's a dark theater. I just hear a guy go, either make it quiet or get it out. One that just grows. I remember years ago, my dad turns to me and he goes, did you know he was gay? And I was like, no. Yeah. Now it doesn't matter and I don't care. But I decided I would tell everyone I ever met for the rest of my life <laughs> that Tommy Lee Jones is gay. I told a lot of people, like from the fugitive through no country for old men. I told everybody. <laughs>
divert doesn't mean dump fuel, you dumb shit. And I was like, I oh, know, I was just playing. Yeah. We're going to land at the nearest airport. me. <laughs> Eyebrow ring, that's another level. That is a statement. And that statement is, fisting is my first base. Like, those chicks are fucking down. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of you, no, I'm seeing disappointment in some people's faces for sure. Yeah, some people are like, mm-mm. <laughs> Didn't sign up for this shit. No, sir. And then the rest of you are like, but, but Tom, what about tongue rings? What about tongue rings, Tom? What about them? Tools of the trade. Did Rembrandt not have a paintbrush? <laughs> Who is Beethoven without his piano? That girl has a tongue ring because her mouth is a honing device for cocks. <laughs> you leave her alone. Or just show your dick. There's a pretty good chance she's gonna lap that shit up. There's a whole hierarchy to the whole thing. Here's how it works. Japanese, they're number one, which is weird because their genitals are blurry. But they're number one, right? <laughs> then... Chinese and Koreans are right there. And then everybody else who's like tan, like Vietnamese and Filipino, they're like, fuck you, true or not? Yeah. Don't you feel better about everything right now? Like, what's your ethnic background? You're Chinese? That's awesome. That's number two. That's almost at the top. That's great. That's got to feel good, right? You're like, yeah. Who, uh, who, who did you like, who did your parents talk the most shit about growing up? Wait, were you raised in an Asian household or are you one of those? That's cute. Let's get one of those. Because that's a legit question. First, Foreign accent syndrome. Some of you know about it, some of you don't. It's real. You can look it up on your way out of here. Some people experience head trauma. Not funny. But they wake up speaking their native language with a foreign accent. Very funny. I defy you to watch interviews with these people and not piss yourself laughing. Do you understand? Like a farmer in Alabama who's normally like boop, that guy <laughs> hits his head and is now like, eh, the tractor trailer, it, eh, it fell, a la man. That's not funny to you, really? <laughs> the best case ever of foreign accent syndrome happened in the UK. And not only was it a British woman who lived her entire life in the UK, She'd never left the town she was born in for 33 years. She was in an accident, and she woke up speaking English, but with a Chinese foreign accent. <laughs> Did you hear what I just fucking said? <laughs> Do you now believe in God? When I was a freshman in college, I looked like this. I looked 47 years old. <laughs> It was alarming to other students. They would see me walking through the doors, and they'd be like, are you a fucking administrator here or something? I'd be like, I'm a freshman. I'm 18. And they're like, you're a narc. That's what you are. <laughs> This is my birth face, man. I'm, I'm 41 Jump Street. So <laughs> with this face came great responsibility. I bought alcohol for our entire dorm. I don't mean three or four. Everybody. It wasn't even a challenge. I looked so old that when I walked into liquor stores, they'd be like, hello, sir, how's the stock market today? <laughs> Shit like that. I bought booze to everybody. Everybody got booze. I did the same thing with pornography. And let me tell you, before you jump at me, like, why would you do that? You just watch it in your dorm room online. Well, the story takes place in 1997. And <laughs> there was a lot of buffering back then. That is the truth. I don't know if you remember the late 90s or if you were even around, but like porn in the late 90s was like, ha, ha, hmm. who am I kidding? I use my right hand, so, ha, hmm. Now, keep in mind, I'm not buying porn for a couple buddies. It is for an entire building of 18-year-old freshman dudes in college. You can't wrap your head around how massive and specific these orders were. I would go door to door, and guys would hand me cash and their wish list. They'd be like, I want black cocks, asses, and feet. Don't fuck it up. I'd be like, all right. <laughs> Do you know what kind of a psychopath I looked like? 
walking through a porn store with a grocery list, like... <laughs> I'm getting older, I know, we all are, but I am, I feel like I'm getting old. And I know you guys are looking up here like, what? You're perfect. That's on the outside, you know? <laughs> You know what the biggest kick in the balls is? It's when your vision starts to decline. Especially if you've had perfect vision your entire life. I've never even thought about it. I've had excellent vision. I've had vision that's off the charts. Like if I'm hanging out with friends and there's a sign 10 blocks away, I can see it. And they're like, how do you see that? I'm like, oh, Jesus loves me. I see it. I can see it right now. <laughs> and now I have like the squint of death or I look at shit like that. <laughs> and people are like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm just looking at shit. Don't don't you ever look at shit? <laughs> and it's tough to accept. I've been in denial. Do you know where you can't be in denial anymore? The DMV. <laughs> I went to renew my license. And when you go, you sign and you pay. Very casually, a lady goes, can you read line three? And I was still arrogant about it. I was like, check this shit out. Now, if you're sitting in your seat right now and you're like, uh, 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 I don't think it's funny. Well, don't get your tits in a tussle. I got two more for you. So, what about persistent genital arousal disorder? That is a fancy way of saying never not coming. These are people that have orgasms every 90 seconds and they can't have jobs. Why can't they have jobs, Tom? Because they're coming all the time. <laughs> it's not appropriate for you to be like, can I try on this shirt? And the guy's like, Ugh. fuck your shirt. I'm gonna wear my old shit. I'm not wearing your fucking shirt. Can you imagine, you're like, oh, we're out of orange juice? Or, I'm like, oh. Just bring water, that's too much sugar. I don't want any more of that. <laughs> my first thought whenever I walk into any room, I'm like, well, I wish I was home right now. Uh, and I think it's your thought too. I think you're like, I hope this is good, but also wrap this shit up so I can go home. <laughs> I actually think that's the meaning of life. Like people are always philosophizing. What is the meaning of life? I'll tell you the meaning of life. The meaning of life is fuck this place, let's go home. Now, Luckily for all of us, I think we are five years away from never leaving our homes again. And I'm pretty fucking excited about it. There, there are a lot of indicators if you're paying attention. Like number one, do you ever really process that you don't have to leave your home to buy anything? I know you're like, yeah, I, I order some things online. No, no, no. You can sit on your couch, pull up your phone, and if you want to, just be like, I want uh, bananas and I want hammers, and I want an eagle's beak. And then Amazon's like, it's on your fucking doorstep, how about that? Isn't that insane to you? You don't have to leave your home to see people. You should, you don't have to. Just hold up the same device and be like, hi. But the number one indicator that we are not gonna leave our homes one day very soon are the number of commercials I see for beds that sit up for you. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't been watching TV, there are endless commercials that they know you're going to order a beverage. So they try to lead you into food. Pull into any Starbucks drive-through and now they greet you, they say, welcome to Starbucks. What can we get started for you to eat today? And you're like, wait, what? I just wanted coffee. And they're like, no shit. What else do you want? So then you're like, I don't know, sausage? Like, what do you have? I don't respect that. I like my shame straight up and honest. And nobody does that better than the West Coast burger chain In-N-Out. And if you've never been, if you've never been in In-N-Out, get your fucking life together and go. And I want you to go simply so you can experience the most shameful and honest question in all of fast food. Because you pull up and you go, I'll have a double-double fries and a Coke. And they go, will you be eating in the car? Yeah, I think so. And they go, I bet you will, you fat fucking pile of garbage. Doesn't that question sting? You're like, am I living in my car? Why am I eating in my car? Because if you say no, they give you a bag and they're like, leave with dignity. But... If you say yes, it's an open tray, and they go, eat out of that, pig. And then it falls in your lap, and they go, pick it up! And you're like, how about, 
And they go, are you going to jerk off when you get home because you're lonely? And you're like, yeah. We're going to give you a free milkshake because you're bumming everybody out. I feel like I'm dying right now. I think you did it. <laughs> this guy's name is Craig. I met him. I made sure to get it. I was like, I'm going to remember you for the rest of my life, man. He, I met him at the bank. Is he a bank teller? No. Is he a security guard? Nope. What's his job? I don't know, whatever they call that guy that stands in the lobby <laughs> of banks now, where you, like, you walk in and you're like, do you work here? And he's like, I think so. That guy? The lobby liaison? Well, I saw him, and we made eye contact. I don't know how you work. For me, if we make eye contact during the day, not at night, but during the day, out of human decency, I acknowledge you. So that's what I did. We made eye contact, and I go, how you doing? And he went, and I was like, okay. So then I get to the second set of doors to walk in. And as I reach for that door, I hear, uh, you going to the bank? <laughs> I go, is this still a bank? He goes, yeah. I go, I'd like to. And he goes, go for it. And I was like, okay, thanks. And then I reach back and he goes, uh, I'm going to Virginia next week. Are you telling me? And I get why you laugh at my physical flaws. Physical flaws are funny. They just are. Disabilities are not. But some are. <laughs> Most aren't. We know those ones, you know? Like if there's a 10K or a quilt, it's pretty bad. But... <laughs> the rest are up for debate. And if you're sitting here and you're like, well, well, well when is it ever fa 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 funny <laughs> Well, luckily for you, I have three examples. First, <laughs> foreign accent syndrome. Some of you know about it, some of you don't. It's real. You can look it up on your way out of here. Some people experience head trauma. Not funny. But they wake up speaking their native language with a foreign accent. Very funny. <laughs> I defy you to watch interviews with these people and not piss yourself. Hello, Uncle Tommy. <laughs> I go, hello to you. And they go, where should we sit? I go, try one of the chairs. And they go, we would like to color. I go, please. And then they sit down and they fucking color. An hour later, I can go into that room and they're like, mm -hmm. I go, that's nice. Where are my boys? Are they in the house? Are they on the house? Are they on? Oh, they're on the street. Fantastic. I go out there. I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing? And they're like, we broke all the crayons and we put them in the mailbox. Like, Thank you. Thanks for doing that. My six-year-old, he goes, what would you do if a bad guy took your stuff? <laughs> I would ask him to give it back. I don't know. He goes, I would get a sword. <laughs> I would cut him into pieces. <laughs> and I'll put the pieces in the mailbox. I'm like, what are you doing with the mailbox, Dahmer? <laughs> he goes, you know, Grandpa liked a full bush. I go, hey. <laughs> I give him a head start. He's three. <laughs> when I stand up, I see him dip into the bathroom. I'm like, no. <laughs> and when I get there, <laughs> and I lose my shit. <laughs> Yell at him. I'm just yelling at my life, you know? <laughs> I'm like, fuck! <laughs> when I turn, he's like, that's what I'm talking about right there. You're a very funny guy. <laughs> Kicked him in the chest. God, those little shits. I took a shower with the uh, six-year-old. He's six. He's not 16. Um, <laughs> if you've never showered with a six-year-old, let me give you some advice. Make sure it's yours. Otherwise... <laughs> 
strange if you're like, what's your name? <laughs> it is beyond your capacity to explain how much you end up loving your kids. It is. And like now, I'm on that side of it. So I get to be amused by people who don't have kids who swear that they get it. That's my favorite. Like, to hang out with a friend who doesn't have any kids and he's like, yeah, man, I see that you love your kids. I, I totally know what you're feeling because I love my dog. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not diminishing pet love. Pet love is real. I, absolutely. I've had pets my entire life. It's the best. I've rescued animals. I encourage you to do it. I have a dog that I adore. But here is the difference between my love for that dog and my kids. If that dog were to hurt one of my kids, immediately and without question, <laughs> I would drown that dog, right? And I mean through yelps, like, ah, I'd go, Bruh! like that. <laughs> I walk in, I see a woman seated at the bar doing what I can only describe as weird shit. <laughs> if you're like, what do you mean, Tom? Well, I think there's a normal spectrum of behavior that you see from one seated at a bar. You know, if you see them seated there, you might see them go like this, or uh, like, hey, or maybe even, ha, ha, ha. This lady is seated at the bar, and she's going, I'm like, is she making fudge? What is she doing over there? I also notice it late. Like, I notice it as I'm walking past it. That happens sometimes, right? Like, you walk, you see something as you're passing it. You're like, that's some crazy shit. And you keep walking. And then you're like, I need to see that again. I don't know how I'm going to see it again. <laughs> now I'm dead center. And I see that a woman, to be clear, is in public 4.30 in the afternoon. And she is sitting there fucking <laughs> peeling her potato. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> playing with her pussy. You know what I'm trying to say. And she is not hot, if you're wondering. <laughs> if you're like, was she super hot? No, she wasn't. And because of that, I tattletailed immediately. <laughs> It's a big time red flag when you meet somebody who's like, yeah, I've had four kids. I haven't changed at all. And you're like, oh, you're super unstable. That's good to know. <laughs> they don't have to be huge changes, but you know, you, you, you kind of evaluate your life and you make a change. Me, personally, I'm very proud of what I changed. I, I realized when I had kids, I had no time, no energy. I need to edit something out of my life. You know what I edited out of my life? Arguing with everyone. Every friend, every family member, I just don't engage. As soon as it starts, I flip it on them, okay? So as soon as I'm arguing with somebody and they're like, yeah, I don't really agree with you, I go, yep, I'm on your side now. <laughs> and they're like, what? I go, I, as soon as you spoke, I came around and joined you. <laughs> That's how little I want to talk to you. <laughs> and I'm free. Feels great. Now, not everybody likes it. I'll tell you, my own mother is not a fan. <laughs> She lives for arguing. There are some people built like that. She lives for, com you know, combative things. She wants to just fucking stab, twist, <laughs> turn. She loves it. She's also a dream crusher, which is my least favorite quality in a human being. I was on a show. I was like, who doesn't hate gypsies? And then everybody on the show was like, we're with you. But <laughs> afterwards, they found out. And they reached out, like the president of the gypsies <laughs> sent me a message. I guess she stole someone's phone, so she sent me this message. We can tell who travels. So uh, she sent me this message. She was like, you said the G word on tell. I was like, huh? The G word? Well, I'm a grown man. And this is over email. She's being a real B word. So <laughs> I didn't want to push her, make her a C word. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where my N words at? All right. Well, look. <laughs> hey, man. It's modern comedy. Get with the program. Now, then she went on. She goes, Well, just so you know, we're very proud of our ethnicity. And I was like, Yeah, you should be. I mean, you have nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're good at camping. <laughs> hey, I was giving her a compliment. I was saying, I enjoy your ethnic pride because you've earned it. And frankly, I don't think everybody has, all right? Every group's like, we're the best. No, you're not. 
It's impossible for everybody to be the best. I'm serious. At this, I remember two years ago, I'm sitting at a cafe in Los Angeles for lunch. I sit down. As I sit down, my friend, I can hear her audibly say, I can't believe I'm thinking that. And I go, thinking what? And she goes, oh, nothing. And I go, what is it? She goes, it's embarrassing. And I go, well, just tell me. She goes, if I tell you, you'll make fun of me. And I go, I always make fun of you. Just say it. <laughs> and she goes, no, it's just something you know, I want to keep inside. I go, but you said you want to do it. So just say it, and then you can make it happen. She goes, I don't want to. I go, listen, if you don't put it out in the universe, it'll never happen. You've got to say it. What is it? And she goes, OK, I want to blow somebody in the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> Now, I immediately think, what would my mom say, you know? <laughs> and I tell myself, don't be like mom. This is this girl's dream. <laughs> so I look her dead in her eyes, and I go, you should try. <laughs> There's a bunch of them. That's what I say. Now, <laughs> three months later, she got on their tour bus, and she told them, and guess what? They all accept it. You don't burden people with your real world problems during a courteous exchange. Yeah. Sure. You know why? Because nobody wants to hear your problems. Your problems make my dick soft. And I am trying to stay hard out here. Now, you know who's got a good system going on? Rodrigo Duterte, the president of the Philippines. <laughs> well, if you're not aware, the president of the Philippines is a super cool guy. And he has a lot of fun ideas. <laughs> One of them is that he employs motorcycle murder squads <laughs> to go out and kill people on sight. No arrest, no trial. Who does he do it to? Drug dealers and suspected drug users. <laughs> suspected. <laughs> do you know how many tired people die every day in Manila? <laughs> Isn't that crazy to you? You could walk out of your house at five in the morning like, oh shit. And then you hear, mm mm. You're like, oh. <laughs> I'm up. And they just roll up next to you. You high? You're like, I just got up. And they're like, mm, you're high. Pow, kill you. <laughs> it's horrific. It's reprehensible. And I hope that we adopt it here. Not, <laughs> not for drug usage, obviously. I, I am not put out by outraged culture, OK? I'm serious. Doesn't affect me. Because I deal with emotionally fragile people every day. See, I have two kids. And <laughs> they bring me their problems. They do. And I speak to them about them. I speak to them differently than I would normally speak to you. You know, they'll come up to me, and my older one will be like, huh, it's loud over there. And I'll be like, is it? Well, then don't go over there. He goes, OK. And I go, OK. And then I go, Mwah, and I kiss him on the head. And that's how I'm going to start speaking to adults who tell me they're offended by jokes during comedy shows. So yeah. The best part is that you don't have to agree. That's the great thing about living in this country. You don't have to agree, but you'll know where I stand. So if you come up to me and you're like, I was deeply hurt by what you said during your ha-ha show. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, were you? Well, you should never hear things you don't like. So you stay home now. Come on, I'll kiss you on that. <laughs> That right. I think that 69ing is overrated and it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see that? Some people clap, some people are like, arrest this man. But listen, <laughs> the story of why is more important. Do you remember when you first heard about it? I do. I was in third grade, and that's too young, all right? <laughs> One of the older kids told me, and I was like, what? <laughs> At the same time? <laughs> I almost had a seizure. I didn't know what he was saying. I didn't even have references so I could pretend like I understood. I was like, that's like eating a cheeseburger covered in ice cream while you're taking a shitter. <laughs> and he was like, that's exactly what it's like. <laughs> From that day on, I was hooked. When I tell you I was obsessed, I was obsessed. 
I'm not saying it for a story. It is all I talked about, thought about, dreamt about, sung about, joked about, 69, 69, 69, 69. Every notebook in school, I was like, 69, 69, 69, 69. Every sports team I was on, I was like, I'm number 69. And they're like, this is fifth grade basketball. Why don't you chill out, buddy? Every birthday, every Christmas, my dad goes, what do you want? I go, I want a 69. He goes, shut up and stop saying that. And I was like, no, defiant, no. 69, 69. It's going to be the best. Be the best, be the best, be the best, be the best. 69. It's going to be like smoking meth out of God's dick. I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. And I built it up, and I built it up, and I built it up. And when I finally got to do it, I finally got to do it. You know what the first thing I said was? Get off me, all right? <laughs> my neck hurts. I can't get my nose out of the way. Does it feel good? It feels like I'm working, all right? It feel better if you flipped over and polished me off, and then I'll do you. Why has it got to be at the same time? Are we late for something? I went home and took another week off. I was black and blue. I was sore. I was like, all right, you know, but after the week, I was like, it's time to get going. I started slowly, you know. I was like, wake up. <laughs> Didn't feel the same. It was strange, different, you know. I could feel the system turning on. You know what it reminded me of? You know when you run the heat for the first time in the winter, and you're like, this smells weird, man. Like, I could feel it building up, and I could not get this one intrusive thought out of my head, which was, it's just gonna be blood that comes out. I didn't want it to be. I just kept thinking it. So now I'm jerking off all scared. I was like, it's going to be blood. <laughs> but I pushed through. I kept going. And when it finally did go, it wasn't blood. And in relief, I laughed. I've been meeting lunatics. I mean, I meet people. I met a guy after a show recently. I'm shaking people's hands, saying hi. Guy comes up to me. He goes, uh, wait, I'm really. And I go, what? He goes, wait, I'm really. I said, where am I from originally? <laughs> I said, I was born in Cincinnati, but I moved around a lot. And he goes, huh, huh, I'm like, yeah, man, play my, huh, huh, Mine's going down there, huh, maybe you from there too. And I go, are you a person that's talking to me right now? And he goes, yeah. And then I decipher that what he's saying is, I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana, about 20 miles south of there. There's a bunch of Seguras down there. I thought, man, I'm a new dad. How about that? I, uh, yeah. That's the best. It's awesome. Guys always hit me up. I don't know why they trust me, but they're like, should I do it? And I'm like, yeah, of course you should do it. It's the best. It's awesome. They're amazing. And also, being a dad is easy, man. <laughs> Super easy. It's way easier than being a mom. <laughs> Here's all you got to do if you want to be a great dad. Seriously. Don't abandon your kid. That's it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Now, I do believe being a mother is inherently harder, especially at the beginning. And that's why I don't like when I hear men complain about it. I wake up, I don't even know where the fuck I am. It's morning. I walk into the kitchen at the same time as her. I go, hey, mom. And she doesn't say anything. I'm like, oh, shit. She just walks over to the coffee maker and she goes, I know you tried to kill me last night. <laughs> It was very clever. <laughs> but I am still here, Tommy. <laughs> I go, I didn't try to kill you. And she goes, oh, yes, June day. <laughs> so I leave for the day. I come back later. I go, look, I owe you an apology. I should not have let you eat that much. I'm sorry. And she goes, it's okay. I forgive you. I'm like, really? Thank you. That makes me feel better. She goes, I just want to tell you one thing. And I go, what? She goes, I want another gummy tonight. And I go, what? <laughs> she eats them every day now. She's doing coke. She grew her bush out. She's fucking the neighbors. She's living her best life. If you ever meet her, give her drugs. Thank you guys very much for coming out. Have a great night.